Well, a very good evening, good afternoon, good morning to you, depending on where you are joining us from. And hey, last week was a wonderful time. And you know what? This time, or oh, this man was kind of dedicated to talking more on relationship. And last week, ah, Ogo took us to another level. And you know what? If you missed Ogo's presentation, don't worry. Just get back onto our page and view it. And this evening, afternoon, morning, mm, 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 I had a chat with a man on relationship. Today, <laughs> I'm going to have a chat with an expert in relationship, a motivational speaker, and an event planner. So if you happen to find yourself in any of these three, <laughs> you are at home. <laughs> you are home. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the African Season Speakers Network's platform with its flagship program, the Power Impact Series, where this evening is going to be you and me, Joy Joy, on dating. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome into our studio and on our platform, Madam Sarah Awo Delali. <laughs> there she is. <laughs> what <Whoa>. an introduction. <laughs> there she is. Oops. Well, just give me another smile and I can go on. <laughs> Wow. Oh dear. Madam <laughs> Sandra. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing very, very well. Thank you for asking. I'm good. Good. I'm awesome. Good, 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 good. good. We thank God. We thank God. How have you been? How have you been after COVID lockdown and all that? How how has life been? Um, okay. <laughs> so it's been it's been a bit of a roller coaster through okay. um COVID, lockdowns, um, and all that. We, we've been, the UK has been in lockdown, I think, more than I can remember. Um, yeah. But yeah. We're, we're getting there. We've gone back into, um, into seeing people face to face, though it's not as it was before, but right. we're, still, we're still getting there. Um, recently, the COVID is, is actually surging again, so we've had to cancel a few events as well, in-person events, um, gone back into into virtual now. Um, so we try and curb curb the infection as much as we can. But hey, life goes on. Jesus is still life goes on. <laughs> <laughs> life goes on. That's a spirit. That's a spirit. Life goes on. Life goes on. Life goes on. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and uh, with COVID, how had relationships? Been. I mean, as a relationship aspect, how has relationship been during the COVID and during uh, this season that we've recovered from COVID? How has relationship life been? Um, it's, it's been it's been up and down for a lot of people, um, mm -hmm. especially if you were dating before um, COVID yeah. and if your relationship wasn't as solid as it has to be. Yeah. Then, with the impact of COVID, you and your partner being in the same um, environment for as long as I can remember, then it might have a bit of a strain on the relationship. However, yeah. if your relationship was solid, if you had that kind of a friendly um, relationship with your with your partner, then it's easy for you to to go through it because then you you have each other's support. Um, and I say that um, COVID has given us the, the ability to evolve, to think outside the box of dating in, in personal spaces as taking it onto the virtual world. So it depends on how your relationship is. If your relationship or your dating um, partner was a long distance one, then maybe with um, lockdowns and restrictions and not being able to travel, then you, you have to succumb to virtual. And if you are not that kind of a virtual person, then you might need help trying to resolve all the issues. <laughs> you might need help. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, kindly viewers, kindly get your questions ready. 
for Madam Sandra yeah. uh, because it's going to be very, very good. <laughs> here. Yeah, yeah, Again, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get all your questions <laughs> ready, and then I uh, know. you can just get them ready. Them up, yeah. So that when it's get time for ready. the Q and A, you will just put them on for Madam Sandra, <laughs> so we will get it. I know a lot of people go through relationship or go through dating. And then sometimes uh, you end to find yourself or ask yourself, uh, did they have a plan before getting into the relationship or getting into the into that dating? Or it was just some kind of pressure that was upon them to move in. Yeah. There. Oh, they just wanted to while away time because hey, I'm not yet ready, but you know, let me while yeah. away time. And then people jump yeah. into it. So yeah. as a relationship respect and a motivational speaker for that matter. <laughs> How are you going to address this issue of dating? Mm. Okay. Right. So when it comes to, like you just said, what was the purpose of you going into dating? There's some people that just date for dating sake. There's some people that are being, like you said, being pressured to go into dating. Maybe uh -huh. everybody around you is is with somebody and you are the proper single among them and so you uh -huh. might feel the need to be with somebody or you might think you're lonely and so you want to be with somebody these are some of the reasons why people go into relationships however if you want to date properly as dating with a purpose then you should know why you are dating so if you don't have any anything in mind then the reason why you are dating or just anyhow is probably because when you don't have a plan and you go into dating, just like you sitting in a car with no destination in mind, you're just driving around for fun. You might get to a point where you get tired and you want to drive back home or you might even run out of fuel because you had no place in mind. You're just going. That is for people that don't have any game plan why they are dating. So they just go around every time they can hurry. You're just dating anyhow, anyhow, in, no purpose in mind. So you have no actual destination in mind. But if you have a purpose in mind, if you have a reason why you're dating, if you're not dating because you, you're being succumbed to pressure or you're just saying I'm lonely, so you want to fill that gap, then you would always get to a good destination. Other than that, you're just going to go round and round in circles. <laughs> is, is, yeah, there way, yeah, yeah. is there a way one person can identify if this relationship I mean is purposeful? Is there a way one can see that? Absolutely. If, if you are dating with a purpose, one, you just don't, like I said, you just don't go into into anybody that you are oh, because I'm, I'm lonely I want to date you you're going to have specific reasons for dating that person right. one could be compatibility two could okay. be that your values align three could be okay. that your purposes align four could be that okay. you are just and um, um, you know there's some people that you just gel everything okay. about you and about them is just like perfect perfect match in as much yeah. as I don't see anybody as a perfect match, there is a thing that puts brings people together. And so if you know the person that, okay, this is, you know, they call something that my soulmate. And I, yeah. I, I, ask, I ask people, what is a soulmate? So your, so your soulmate is somebody that you gel with, somebody that okay. you're, you're, how do I put it, without sounding too, too um, like in the classroom. We're not in a classroom. <laughs> we're, having a, we're, having a, we're having a discussion so it, it, i mean that thing that makes you makes you have fun but at okay. the same time you have a destination in mind and you're both heading towards that destination it makes relationships beautiful other than that you know you you are in a yacht let's say you, you've gone to um a you want to go on a cruise you there, there's lovely yachts all over you yeah. get the one that you want you sit in you don't even know where the yacht is going. Maybe it's okay. going to the Caribbean. Maybe it's going to the Middle East. Maybe it's coming to Africa. You have no idea. You get stuck in it. Yeah. And it's taking you to yeah. Africa. And you're thinking, oh, this is nowhere I wanted to go. I wanted to go to the Caribbean. <laughs> I'm sorry you didn't ask. You didn't tell me where you want to go. So I can take you well, anywhere I want. Yes. Yeah. But if you have a destination in mind, it means you have a purpose you're running with. 
Okay, okay. Right, so ladies and gentlemen, joining us all over the world, wherever you're joining us from, can you share the page and let others also understand and get to know that uh, you need to know where you're going to before you jump onto the bus on the road of dating. Because we're in here with that wonderful lady, with that wonderful soul. Hey, let me ask you, have you already found your soulmate? <laughs> if you've not found your soulmate yet, make sure you are on the same path with that soulmate. Because Absolutely. if you don't want to say that, get ready to be dropped along the way. Absolutely. Right. So over to you, Madam Sandra, for yes. today's presentation. <laughs> All right. I thought it was going to be like a question and answer thing. I love it when you ask me questions and I'm, and I'm answering for you. I'm so, okay with it. I'm okay yeah. with that. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay it, with doesn't that. Really, it doesn't really matter. I mean, um, so many times when we talk about dating with peppers, people would ask you, what do you mean by dating with peppers? Every date is a date. But like yeah. I explained before, if you have no destination in mind, you just go round and round in circles. And then you get you, you start kissing all the toads before you meet maybe a frog. You might not even you might not even kiss a frog at all. You might end up with an orgy. <laughs> so you need to have a purpose in mind. And having a purpose in mind is that this person I'm going to date, how do I before you even date the person, you yourself as an individual, what do you want in a relationship? What do you want from the person that you want to go out with, the person that you want to maybe in future settle down with, have kids with, have a future with? What do you want? And for me personally, I had quite a long list of what I wanted in the man that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Because right from the word go I was sort of like a go-getter I was very independent and I didn't really want anybody that would choke me or would prevent me from going to where I want to go because I wanted to achieve what I wanted to achieve and so my list was quite long and my friends used to laugh at me that no man can tick all these boxes and I keep telling them all good and perfect gifts come from God I'm not expecting an angel I'm expecting a human being who has flawed we all have, I'm not perfect. Listen, I'm a very terrible person, but. <laughs> <laughs> that was exact, exact question I was going to ask. How terrible are you? <laughs> oh, very. <laughs> you, you need to know how to live with me to live with me. Um, right. So right. I have my own flaws as well. Um, so if when I was going to date somebody, I need to know that this person is not perfect. He's got their flaws as well. But then we should be able to know how to accommodate each other's flaws. How to, as long as it's not abusive. Listen, if, if you're in an abusive relationship or if you're dating a narcissist, then I'm sorry, that one you need to pack off and go. But everybody has flaws. Everybody has issues that we all deal with. I mean, there are some people that, when they, when they finish eating, even if there's only one spoon, they will still leave it in the sink. And that can be a trigger point for, for some people. So you should know their flaws and try and accommodate them. Tell them, listen, I'm that kind of a perfectionist that if when you finish eating, just rinse your spoon and put it away. So you need to accommodate. But the whole, the whole idea of dating with the purpose is that you know the end, your destination where you're going. So assuming that you've met somebody you're, you're going out, maybe a couple of dates, you realize that they're not honest. They're not trustworthy. What did they say A today, tomorrow, when you ask them, they say it's a different story. Then you should know that, listen, you guys, there's no way um, there's going to be issues along the line because they're not trustworthy. If you're an honest person, you don't want to date a, a dishonest person. If you're a loyal person, you don't want to date somebody that is so dis disloyal. So you should know what you want in a relationship and know what you want in the individual that you want to date and you should know yourself what you can tolerate what you can take what you can accept what is your breaking point what is your trigger point what are the boundaries that you set so these are very important when it comes to dating however i've seen a lot of people a lot of people not having this kind of things in place and when you ask them they, they tell you nobody is perfect every date is a date i'm sorry every date is not a date don't don't go kissing a toad when there's a frog that can turn into a prince don't you mess your life up 
what if uh, they are just testing the water so they want to kiss the toad and see if it can work out well for them into a print. okay if the toad doesn't turn into a print and you don't turn and you are not cinderella so you don't lose a slipper in the end what do you become you start getting hit you start thinking if you're a woman you say oh i'm being used but you're not being used. You haven't set your standards as to what you want. If you're a man, you keep saying that, oh, the girls are dumping me. They just come, they want my money, and then they leave me. No. What do you bring to the table? Okay. Whatever you bring to the table. Listen, you're not afraid to walk away when your presentation is on point. Because you know who you are. You know what you carry. You know that I just don't want to date for dating's sake. I want to okay. date with something in mind. But you need, also need to know that like you're saying, testing the waters. When you're dating, dating is not about going to have sex or going to accept money from, from the per guy you're, you're, you're dating. Dating is simply getting to know you. So mm -hmm. there are people that multiple date. They can, they can date as many guys or as many women at one time because they're not exclusive with anybody, which mm -hmm. society accepts it because I'm not exclusive with you. So mm -hmm. I can go out with a couple of guys, see who fits into the criteria, and then I settle. When I become exclusive, then I don't date any other person. But if I'm not exclusive, then I'm at liberty to date as many people as I want. As long as I'm not sleeping with you, as long as you're not giving me money, then hey, you don't owe me. We're not obligated to be okay. together. If the relationship okay. doesn't work out, kudos. Thank you. Bye. Or you say good Bye. reading to bad rubbish. <laughs> But but are, are, are the two people dating? Are the two people dating have this kind of understanding that hey, we are not exclusively together. We kind of check in if it can work out. It's Do very important. It's very important that when you when you start dating, you see that's what I'm saying that people are not very honest. People are not very open. People are not very genuine. Because when you're very genuine, you need to let the other person know, listen, at the moment, I'm not dating anybody. You, I'm just going out with you to get to know if it would work out. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. I have other co other people I'm dating. But I think that in, in our typical African settings, we don't we don't usually do that. We, we don't say I'm dating multiple okay. people. However, in the Western world, it's very common where... Okay people date multiples because okay. they think that I'm not exclusive with you. And the moment they become exclusive with one of them, they don't date any of the other girls or guys because then okay. now they're devoted to one person. Okay. okay. But I think that in African setting, when you do that, they tend to tag you as you're a bad girl or you're a okay. player um, and that kind of a thing. But being a player is different from trying to find the one you want to settle down with. Okay. A player is somebody that is banging on all of them. He has three or four. He's got 10,000 tongues. He's singing to everybody. You know, that is a kind of a player. Um, but somebody that knows where they're going would not succumb to that kind of a pressure of being called a player because they want to know that they're not making a mistake. You know, personally, I think when I met my husband, we were just friends. And we were friends for, for a while. And then we realized that the relationship or the friendship was progressing. And then he said to me, listen, I want us to be exclusive. Would you mind? I'm like, no way. I think I like you, guy. Let's just give this thing a chance. And it worked perfectly. Okay. So you have to be open enough and let the person know this is what I want. In, in, the, in the event that the relationship doesn't even work out, at least yeah. you both knew that you gave it your best chance. Okay. It's important. <laughs> Know yourself, know what you want. And Absolutely. Then... It's very important that you know what you want. Right, right. So in the case where well, you really know what you want, but what you want is not coming. You don't, you don't allow society or pressure to determine when to go into a relationship. You know, yeah. you don't have to be pressured into saying that, okay, I want a frog. But all that are coming my way is a toad, so I settle down with a toad. Okay. The frog will never, and the toad will never become Prince Charming. However, the yeah. frog will become Prince Charming. So if you, if you want Prince Charming, you wait. 
there is no pressure listen if if you if you enjoy being who you are if you enjoy your own company if you're content with yourself then your single state is very very beautiful because you're not being pressured you're probably pursuing a career or education or you're trying to build a business for yourself whether you are a woman or you're a man you you you've got you've got something going for you you know so you don't in as much as you might want to be in a relationship if it's not coming you don't kill yourself neither do you settle for less than what you deserve you see when you begin to settle for less than what you deserve that's what brings about all these problems you know this guy is abusive yet because you think i'm growing you settle down with him you know this lady is promiscuous yet because you're thinking you settle down with her you know she's very disrespectful you know she's lazy you know she hasn't got your best interest at heart you know that the purpose you have for your life she hasn't got it you're yeah. telling her where do you want to see yourself in the next five years and she's saying probably a wife and a mother where is she going? You are seeing yourself as a top-notch CEO. You are seeing yourself as building empires. You're seeing yourself as going places. And this person you're even telling, oh, would you want to go back to school or or maybe um, do something? And they're like, no, I'm content with who I am. And then you just settle. Along the line, frustration will set in. And even if you get married, you might tend to look outside. If you don't look outside, you will endure and you would never be happy. So you need pressure. Pressure should not dictate as to how and when you go into a relationship. That is a no-no. Pressure should never dictate. Right. Absolutely not. <laughs> pressure should not be part of the list to No, never. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if pressure shouldn't be the absolute thing to consider when going into a relationship or dating someone sorry come again i said if pressure shouldn't be the main focus with which you used in going to a relationship or date yeah then yeah. does it mean that every relationship or dating which is purposeful mm -hmm. will end up in marriage absolutely not yeah. that's what i'm saying that not all relationships are going to end up in marriage however you would know that you gave it your best shot okay so if i'm if you're dating somebody and it's even though it's purposeful you would have that connection you would have that that peace because you know you know what you want to do in the long run most relationships that are based on purpose 99 percent of it end up in marriage okay they do but in the event that it doesn't, you know that you gave it your best shot. Okay. okay. But usually it does. It does because you all have the same end result. You all have the same end goal. You all have the same end um, destination. This is what we want to do. There are some guys you meet and they tell you, listen, I don't want to play around. I want to settle. I want a woman who is this. I want a woman who is that. He's giving you what he wants. So if you're not ready to settle down with him, he would walk away even though you might present yourself as the best thing that happened to him since sliced bread he will still walk away because that's not what he wants and there are some women that would also come to you whilst you're dating them and then you realize that this this guy i'm going out with doesn't fit into where i want to go in life you know um i was telling somebody a few days ago that i didn't get married early because I knew where I was going and I wanted a man that would fit into where I was going. And at a point, my mom thought I wasn't going to get married. I wasn't really. <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, my, my, my late dad, when I was in my teens, kept telling people that um, if, you don't, if you don't treat me well, when my daughter is getting married, I won't give you some of her black label. I mean, so it was... <laughs> So, so these are the kind of things that when you set a standard for yourself and i know a lot of people say that you don't need to set, set standards for yourself when it comes to relationships however i always prove them wrong that as a professional when i'm talking to somebody that wants to go into a relationship i ask you first what do you want so if you don't know what you want then you'll be case sera, sera. what will be will be but if you know what you want then you don't settle for less than what you deserve Okay. you know even if it's not presented to you listen a diamond 
it's not come as i don't know if you can see my um my little diamond ring but a diamond doesn't come to you refined as that it comes to you with all the rough edges is the rough but what's inside when it's refined turns into that amazing diamond that sparkle that every girl wants to have a rock now when you we are in a relationship with somebody and you realize that there is a diamond with the rough edges you clean the rough edges to get access into the diamond you just don't check it out so uh -huh. you need to know whether this person is going to fit into it you know right. I, I usually use my life as an example i don't like talking about people when i met my husband he was a student Okay. I was a, I was a full time career girl. I was earning my money. I had my car. I was going places. <laughs> but he was a student, you know. And I remember one of my aunties telling my mom that, um, you know, they said it's in Fanti that oh this guy is a student. How is? And my mom said to my auntie that, having spoken to him, she can see that he has a future. So let's wait and see how it pans off. And right. a couple of my friends were also like, well, you, you, you've you rejected a, a whole lot of guys. Why would you want to date a student? And sometimes when I sit down, I'm like, why did I want to date a student? But he was the best fit for me. Wow. He was the diamond with the rough edges. Wow. And when the rough wow. edges fell off, the actual oh. diamond sparkled. Oh. And today I can <laughs> say without shutting my eyes that I have one of the best relationships in the world. Sure, sure. So you took time to work time. on the rough edges. Absolutely. Because, because you saw a diamond. I saw a diamond. You saw a diamond. People thought yes. that's the dead. Yep. But you yes. saw a diamond. I did. So you need to know who you're going out with. Irrespective of what people are how, thinking. How do, see, how do you see that? How do you okay. see that? Diamond? So it, dating somebody is getting to know them. Okay, by their fruits, you shall know them. By the <laughs> way somebody talks to you. <laughs> if I talk to you for 10 minutes, I would get to know the kind of a person you are a little bit. If every day I talk to you for 10 minutes, I will get, you would definitely say something that would be a trigger point for me. You right. would say something that I would grasp. I would tell you things. I will tell you my visions. I will tell you my dreams. You will support them. You will be there for me. Listen, one of the, um, sorry, my nose is quite itchy today. I don't know why. One of the one of the things that um, amazed me was that when I was dating my husband, I was ill for like a week at home, and he would go to school, and then he would go to work. So he wasn't earning as much as I was earning at that time. Okay. But he bought me a get well soon card, and in that get well soon card, that was 19 years ago. He put right. hundred pounds in that card for a oh. student to give me hundred pounds. Then oh. that was about okay. Let's say that that's today you giving me like maybe three or four hundred pounds in a get well soon card, okay. and I didn't open the card until he had he had gone. And so when I opened it, I was like, oh wow! So I said to my mom, that look, Albert bought me a card and he's got a, a hundred pounds in it. And then my mom said, he who has little and shares with you. When they have much, they give you more. Right. So it became like a part of that. All right. And so I saw the generous side of him. I right. saw the kind hearted part of him. I right. saw the family oriented side of him because he was able right. to get on with everybody in my family. Okay. Right. And then I saw his future because of what he used to say. And he supported every dream that I had. There were even those that I thought were too huge. And I'm thinking, how is it going to be? But when he hears them, he's like, you know what? This thing is possible. It can't be right. done. It right. can't be done. And, you know, right. and so you, you need to know the person you're dating. If I'm dating you and we have an argument, it's inevitable. In every relationship, you would have an argument because we're two different people with two different opinions. If I'm having an argument with you and you get so upset and you hit me, I should know that in future, when I settle down with you, you would beat me black and blue. Right. Uh, you wouldn't tell me, oh, I'm sorry, I got upset and I hit you. What happens in future when you get upset? You're going to do it again. Now, right. if I'm dating you and you keep lying to me, keep lying to me, keep lying to me, when we get married, you will do the same and even more. 
whatever happens when you're dating and is unhealthy the minute you get married it expands it explodes become like an explosion become like a bomb so you right. need to know right from the word go you would see that person with the rough urges if you're dating a narcissist you would know from the beginning they will love bomb you then he'll begin to let you see everything is about me 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 everything is about them <laughs> You know, never about you. When you want to share your vision with them, they would go, oh, even this vision of yours is not, they want to portray themselves as the best thing that ever happened to you. So you would know. Right. So if you don't know who you are and what you want, that is why you don't live with the purpose. You just sit in any car. I'm going to, um, um, okay, I'm in Ghana. I'm going to Steko. I've sat in a car that is going to um, Tema. How do I get to my destination? Uh, I'm just sitting and not going anywhere because yeah. I have no destination, actual destination in mind. But if you know who you are, what you want, where you're going, when you see those little, little rough edges that don't become a diamond, they're just a rock and a stone or a gravel or just dirt, you, you say, good radiance to bad rubbish. I'm not settling for this because I know who I am and I know I deserve more than what you're bringing to the table. Sorry, but I'm not sitting. I'm out of here. <laughs> well, viewers, it's getting it's getting to the next level. We are passing. We are getting there. So you know what? If you are sick, can you call the one you are dating purpose? Yes. Let's see if he's going to bring you the car with a hundred pounds mm -hmm. in it. Let's try it now. <laughs> No, let's try it now. Let's try it now. Well, so we will share the page. If you want to sponsor this program, as we always say, drop a message and let's have a way of raising a wider number of people because these are golden nuggets which have been shared. And we don't want to be selfish by keeping it to ourselves. Share the page, share it up, and let's raise a larger number of people because, hey, there are a lot of people sitting in the wrong car and they are getting ready to get off because that is not the right car to the destination you're going to. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Sandra. Okay, so you, you were talking about abusive person. Right? Yeah. So now let's take it from this side. You know, this person is not abusive. Yeah. But this is what he or she is doing. Yeah. You speak with the person and the person tells you this is where I want to see myself in the next five, ten years. But this person is genuinely in love with you. I mean, you like everything about the person. But that one thing you are looking for, the person keeps changing it. It keeps and, and the person is not really, you don't really see any effort being made by the person to get to where they have told you that this is where I want to be in the next five, 10 years. That is not abusive. But no. because of the kind of vision or the kind of dream the person has shared with you, do you still hang around with that person thinking that, yeah, in the next <laughs> Yeah, year, no, I want to the valley of the shadow of death. <laughs> I will fear no evil because I, I know it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's an... <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing so hard this evening. You know what? <laughs> yeah. Like I said, when you know what you want, when you everybody has flaws. There are some flaws or imperfections you can handle and you can deal with. There are others that is is a is a deal breaker for you. So deal breakers, it's a no-no. You don't accept them. Some okay. people, however, would say, okay, I would try and bring you into my world and see if we can match up. But then you, for me, personally, I would say, if it is a deal breaker for you, don't settle for it. Because at the end of the day, what becomes um, things that, a quirk, let's say a quirk, you know, I'm somebody that, um i do this a lot when i'm thinking my little finger is sometimes uh, and i'm thinking about something i right. do that or i chew my my lip a bit that's when i'm okay. in deep thought and sometimes i talk to myself especially when i'm typing 
I talk to myself. My kids laugh at me when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> so quirks, these are my little quirks. So quirks that you can accept whilst you're dating, if care is not taken when you get married, they become frustrations for you. It means they were your deal breakers. So like I use the spoon as an example. Yeah. If 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 a, your partner leaves the dirty spoon in the sink and it's not you're not irritated by it, you can just wash it and put it away. It's okay. For somebody, it's a deal breaker. You have to wash your spoon and put it away. So with such a person, you don't say, I'll try and accommodate um, what you're saying yeah. to see if I can fit into your life. It means that you're settling for less on what you deserve. Okay. If you can't, you can't. No, you see, relationships are not difficult. It's the people in it that makes relationships difficult. Oh, okay. If I'm getting to know you and I like yeah. you and we're flowing, we're compatible, we're able to talk about everything and nothing, we'll be able to have fun, then yeah. we should be able to, you know, connect the dots here and there, work on our flaws so that our partner is not too much hurt. We're able to uh, um, say, okay, listen, I don't like this thing you're doing. And, you know, gradually, couples or partners work on each other. Right. And so yeah. things that I would love but would be an offense to my partner, I wouldn't do because I don't want to hurt him. Things that he would personally love to do and I wouldn't, I don't love, he wouldn't do because he thinks he's going to hurt me. These are the kind of things that we bring into a relationship. You don't think about you, 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 you. The moment it becomes you, 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 there's a problem. So if you're saying in the next five, ten years, this is what you want to do. In the next five, ten years, what I want to do, and you are telling me that my plans and my vision don't fit into yours, but you want me to accept yours, then I'm sorry. For me personally, it's a deal breaker. I'm not gonna do it. I I won't I won't succumb to that. But I've seen other women that will say, Oh, it doesn't matter. Oh, he's rich. Oh, he would change. Please, nobody would change. <laughs> that, you see, that is one thing that I think a lot of people think that, oh, when we are dating and we all have flaws, when we get married, we change. They don't change. And you are nobody's saving grace. Don't say I want to change him. You can't. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. You are nobody's saving grace. Don't say I want to change him or I want to change her. It's impossible. You can't yeah. change anybody. Leave that to God to work on the person. But don't say I get married to him and I change him. This guy you were dating is going out every weekend with friends, leaving you at home, and you're saying, when I get married to him, I'll change him. Girl, wake up and smell the coffee. You, it's not going to happen. He would leave you at home even when you're pregnant, and he would go out with his friends. He would do it without blinking an eye. You know, so... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're thinking when, when they marry their responsibilities increase, that will cause them to change. I'm sorry, it, it will become it will become worse. When you get married, <laughs> things that you were covering when you were dating, right? right. Or things that you were just sweeping under the carpet, it right. you lift up the carpet, you're like, whoa, is that the dead that was hiding there? Yes, because you kept sweeping it, you kept sweeping it there. Okay. You kept sweeping it there, you swept it and you left it under the carpet. So the day you pick it up, you realize, ooh, I've got cupboards, I've got uh, um, cockroaches, I've got even mice can live in your home if you don't take care of them. So you, you right from the word go, have a purpose. Right. Date with a purpose. Have a vision in mind. Have a right. purpose in mind. What do I want? Okay. Can I live with this person? This is where I want to see myself with. This is how I want to, I want my life to go. This is what I want to do. Is yeah. this person able to walk the journey with me? Yeah. If you won't, then you have no business being in my life. And don't let relationships, don't let people force you into it. Don't, don't begin to think that all my friends have relationships or they're getting married, <laughs> so I need to find myself a man. I'm sorry, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> have a purpose, have a vision. Where are you going? Is that person going with you? Can you trust that person? Yeah. Is that person honest? Are they always talking to their ex-partners? Are they always talking about their ex-partners? Are they always saying they don't have money? Are they always saying they're out of job? Is he looking dirty? Is, does, he, does he even want to bath? Yeah. You yeah. need to think about all these things. There's some, there are some even girls that don't even like bathing, you know, and there's some guys that don't like bathing either. So if yeah. that is a deal breaker for you, why go and settle with such a person? Yeah. Me, yeah. if you don't bath, you won't sleep in my bed. So you need yeah. to have a bath. Right. If I'm bathing, why are you not bathing? We all need to, right. you know. And right. so you need to you need to know 
um, all that. Let's say you are somebody that loves going to the gym. You start dating a girl or a guy that is always saying, why are you going to the gym? I don't want you to go to the gym. And then it's becoming an issue. Why would you want to be with such a person? In the long run, it's going to cause issues. So if you want to go to the gym, date somebody that is going to be your cheerleader. Yep. Say, listen, I'm doing it for myself. I'm going to the gym for me, not because of you, but for myself. Let the person cheer you on. Let the person say, go, girl, you can do it. You know, yeah. I got your back. I'm here for you. If you need yeah. me, do you want me to drop you off? Do you want me to come with you? Do you, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, Relationship uh, is beautiful, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> right, relationship can be beautiful. But hey, you said yeah. something that was 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 wow. I I I guess I just noted it down. So relationships <laughs> are not difficult. It is the no, people. No, the people in it. Yeah. Wow. The people in it. it it's it's Yo, rather viewers, unfortunate. <laughs> viewers, that, that that is a take home. Relationships <laughs> are not difficult. It is the people that makes it difficult. And it says, yeah. <laughs> and then, then a guilt says, just get, repeated what you just said, that uh, you are nobody's saving grace. <laughs> no. Is, is work. Don't go into the relationship without mine. <laughs> no. I'll change him. Oh, I, can, I think I can change him. You girl. <laughs> so maybe if he, he feels that, I mean, yeah, if the girl feels that, hey, this guy, yeah, I see, I see a brighter future. And I think this thing, I can work on it. Yeah, you know, like I said, when <clears throat> when you see the person, like I said to you, the diamond doesn't come to you sparkly. The diamond comes to you with all the dirt. Okay. Yeah. Now, when the rough edges are something that you can clean, it makes right. it easy. But okay. if you realize that it, there is no diamond in it, and you're just cleaning a rock, you're just cleaning a yeah. mere stone, there is no point because then you're wasting your time. There's yeah. nothing hidden in that that thing but if there is a gem in there you know there's there's some there's some guys that can take a woman or a girl that doesn't fit into what society will think the guy should date but give them a couple of years you will see the girl and you would not recognize it why because right. the guy that was dating her saw a gem in her right. so he brought her home polished it and presented it to the world. This is my girl. Uh, and you know what? The, the, the good thing about you uh, um, having that kind of a gem is that when you put it on the pedestal and you look at it, you're like, let me get this one. You know, you become so proud that this yeah. person is mine. This right. person is my husband. This person is my wife. And it makes you proud. There are some people when you can't even introduce them. You, when I like, if I see you, I'm like, oh, Benjamin, meet um, Kweku, Kweku, meet Benjamin. I can't even say this is my husband because I'm not <laughs> proud of the person I'm married. But if I'm proud of, I, <laughs> I would just show you to the world that you are mine. I'm, right. I'm excited. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of the man you are. I'm proud of where you're going. I'm right. your biggest cheerleader. Right. I'm carrying you on. I know the vision we have. I know that we can talk. We can play. We can joke. You allow me to be myself. I have my space. You have your space. There is nothing holding us back. Yeah. Then I'm like, yes, now I have arrived at the destination that I wanted to be. Not yeah. still looking back thinking, shall I go to Cape Coast or to Elmina? <laughs> I don't know. I don't you know. I did literature in school, so I don't remember that book. Yes. <laughs> I'm out here this, uh, the dilemma of a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you start thinking, you don't know what to do. You don't know where to go. Are you going right. or you're coming? You, you know, it, it, it's, it's just a mess. mess. It's just a mess. But people need to sit down, sit back, relax, know where they're going, take their time, explore, get to know the person. Right. And hey. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> on the home note. Now on the home note. Now that, 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 that sound. That sound is an alarm sound. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Alarm sound. It is. <laughs> when you hear the hmm sound, it's an alarm sound. So Tell now me we about want to dive into, <laughs> we want to dive into the alarm sound. Okay, so 
<laughs> it's rather right. sad. It, it's yeah. rather unfortunate that um, we we allow dating to become or relationships in general to become like you're in a prison, you know. Right. Um, right. And then right. for me, sometimes the stories that I hear, I I tend to think, do they make them up or? But then when I yes, when I go into it, I realize no. Some of the stories you hear them and you're thinking it's like a Nigerian movie being acted, because it it it's a, a whole lot of a mess. And you ask yourself, so when you were dating, didn't you see it? Oh, I saw it, but I thought they would change. Who told you yes. that? Yes, that, that that that's 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 the thing. So they saw it, so it, it it it's it's not as if. They didn't see all these things coming. They saw no, them. They, they did, saw. but they, they ignore the red flag. Okay. okay. So like I use an example in the beginning okay. that you're dating, somebody slaps you and you're yeah. thinking, oh, when I get when we get married, he won't slap me yeah. again. No. Okay. Once he slapped you once while you're dating, when you get married, he will beat you. He will not slap you, he will beat you. <laughs> but yeah, you see that you are capable, you're able to take slaps. So yeah, exactly. So, so you are okay with it, you know. So let's say you're dating somebody, and um, this person doesn't even want you to go out with your friends, doesn't want you to visit your family, doesn't want you want. He always wants you to be with me, 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 me. And you think when you get married, he'll allow you to go out? No. Mm, yeah. You at the end of your social life, because yeah. maybe your friends were telling you you're dating this guy he's taking you out of all your friendship zones and you're like oh because he loves me he wants to be you know girls we're so i don't know um oh he loves me he wants to be with me he wants he loves my company and all that. listen i'm not saying when you're dating don't spend time together it's good to spend time together because that is when you get to know each other but allow space for everyone to become their own individual even in a marriage setting you have you had your own individuality before coming together. So go out on your own, have fun on your own. But when you come together as a couple, you do things as a couple. It's very important because if you don't have your personal space, even in a marriage setting, it will suffocate you. We were just talking about COVID prior to coming on air. And this is what happened. A lot of people didn't know how to pivot their relationship because of COVID. But me, there are times when I'm, because we were all at home, me, my husband, and my kids were all at home. There are times I just go and sit outside. I will spend like the day outside in my garden. And my okay. husband would tell my children, leave mommy alone. Okay. okay. Even when I come inside and I come and sit with them for a few minutes, I go back outside again. So he realized that that was a pattern for me to just okay. get my own personal space. So he wasn't, he wasn't encroaching on that. Right. When he's upstairs, I leave him to be upstairs alone because I thought, okay, he needs his personal space as well. So I stay downstairs with my kids. I go and check up on him now and then, but then I leave him alone just so that he can also regain his thoughts, yeah. regather whatever thing he's thinking about, how he's going to get his business off the ground again, how he's going to yeah. sort his stuff out, yeah. you know, just so that everybody has their own um, mind to, to, to work with. Yeah. But if you are dating and this person is five o'clock, he's at your office to pick you up. <laughs> you spend the evening, 8.30, he takes you home. In the morning, 7.30, he's at your house. He takes you <laughs> back to your office. He picks you up. You have yeah. no personal life. You right. tell him you're going to a wedding, and he's like, oh, the wedding is just for your friend. Why would you want to go? Why don't you want to spend time with me? You you invite him. Either he comes along or he says, I don't know the people, so I wouldn't come. And so it, be, it becomes, oh, gosh, <laughs> you're just choking. And you think you are in love, and so you stay and you suffer. He proposes to you, you're jumping for joy. I do, I do, I do. Okay, now he gets married, he takes you home, and then mm, mm. even to go to the market, he goes with you. He has your list. He... <laughs> you are suffocating. You need time to breathe. Okay, yeah. so know all these. Don't don't ignore the red flags when you're dating and make sure you know your boundaries. Know what triggers you. Know what is a deal breaker for you. And don't yeah. say, because I'm growing or because society expects me to or because uh, my family is pressuring me to marry this person X, Y, and Z because of the family name and all that. You're not marrying the family name. You're going to live with the person. Right. So you need to know. If not, you're going to be very miserable. 
and being right. miserable in a relationship is not the best right at all at all so it's 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 it bothers around understanding by the example that explicit example you gave you having your time your partner understands you so yep. that means both parties have learned about each other so yep. i know that my partner at this point in time needs that space i allow them that space i don't encroach on their space that is basically understanding the journey both of you are on absolutely <laughs> absolutely you see relationship very easy <laughs> <laughs> Well, it is so easy. It's so easy when um, you find the right person and you are both on that same path together. Yeah. That makes that is it. Why, that is why you need to date with a purpose in mind. The purpose in mind. Yeah. That is why yeah. you need to have an end goal. You know, yeah. you need to. You need to know this is what hits home for me. Yeah. I was telling. I was telling somebody a few weeks ago that my older daughter plays rugby. Okay. And they have something that is called the end goal, where they, okay. oh, when you're watching rugby match, sometimes my heart just bleed because <clears throat> they're girls and they come in together with their heads and they bump and you take the ball and you're running with it. And then when you hit, you end, you hit the end goal, you go touch down and you put the ball down and you've, you've won, you've scored. Okay. Right. So the ball in your hand, is it yeah. worth defending with your life like that? Oops. Is it worth you running and hitting the floor and saying, I've touched down? Is it worth going that end goal, end zone with it? If it is not, then drop it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your life on that ball. But if it is worth you running that mile and hitting and saying, yes, I've hit home, then yes, you got it with all your life. You hit them, you bump, you bump, but you, you know where you're going. Okay, so if you don't have that in, in you, if you don't have that, you know, you're dating somebody, but that your gut, something inside of you, your intuition is telling you it's time for you to call it quits. It's time for you to let it go. But you're still holding on to it. And then you get married and you're saying what God has joined together, let no man put us under. Did God put you two together or you did it yourself? You're not compatible on any level, you know? And then you blame God for something he hasn't done. Right. You blame the Holy Spirit for things he didn't do. <laughs> God, why, did, well, why did you bring me this evil woman? Did God bring you the evil woman? You no. Chose. You chose her, you know? <laughs> something inside of you was saying, this is not the best one for you. But yeah. you still kept it. You still held on to it. You still right. thought I could protect it. Now you've hit your end zone and you realize, oh, after all, the slipper didn't fit Cinderella. She wasn't the one. What do you do? What do you do? Do you endure or do you walk away? Yeah. Then it becomes another, you know, another statistics. But they call you a divorcee. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Sandra, the Lali Devil. <laughs> yeah, you know, the hashtag for today's program, I, I've already gotten the hashtag. It says, what? Well, if it's not, drop it. If it's not, <laughs> drop it. Don't guard it with your life. You don't need it. <laughs> if it's not, drop it. Absolutely. Yeah. Drop it like so it's hot. That is the next miracle. That is the next miracle for relationship. <laughs> And that is Sandra, the lady. <laughs> Don't get into something you can defend your with life you. with. No. Absolutely. Because I'm not it's not going to turn out to be any good. No. So why do you do that? So, especially with the ladies, do you have you have that gift of identifying a right relationship yes. from a wrong yes. one. You do that. Yes. yes. Let me gather all the brothers here. <laughs> <laughs> Let me gather all the brothers here. Brothers, <laughs> let's listen. <laughs> okay, Sandra, take over. <laughs> now that I've gathered all the brothers, 
So no, there, there, there's something in women called intuition. Right. Okay. It, it's a gift God has given to any woman. Right. And it's called intuition. And your right. intuition is what makes you make the right decisions from the wrong ones. Right. However, sometimes in the quest of finding a relationship, we suppress that intuition. We suppress right. that inner voice right. that is telling us this person is not right for you. Right. It could be that maybe this guy has money or his appearance is good, he smells good, he speaks good English, his, his vocabulary is on point, his grammar, the commas and the full story, he dots all his I's and crosses all his T's. So you right. think this is okay. But then inside of you, something, that something is still that little nudge. Right. That little nudge is telling you, nah. But yet... Like I said, in the quest of finding a relationship, you suppress that inner little voice, you ignore all the red flags, and then you go settle for less than what you deserve. Then in the end, it becomes a problem for you. It's not all about, I mean, people say oh, the inner beauty. I'm sorry, appearance does matter. Okay. How you present yourself matters a lot because I get to see you before I get to know you. And right. so if you, right. it depends on everybody though, but as a gentleman, if you want a lady to look at you and say, damn, this guy is hot, right. you need to look good. Sure. Don't get me wrong. You need to, you don't need to spend a thousand pounds on you to look good. You can yeah. still wear things from um, the charity shop and you still look good. Depends on how you carry yourself. So it's important that you, you look good on your appearance. Right. Every woman wants a man that looks good, whether you believe it or not. 99% <laughs> of women love guys that look good. Right. And your attitude, women will watch out for attitude a lot. Okay. Right. So the way you talk to me, the way you treat me, the way you make me feel when I'm around you, these right. are the things that will attract me to you. Okay. Right. So I get to see your outer appearance before right. I get to know you. The, knowing you right. is what they right. call the inner beauty. But that's, right. I don't see the inner beauty when I see you. I see your face. I see your nice teeth. I see your, you know, right. clean shave. That's what yeah. I see. What Talking I see. to you, getting closer to you, then I get to know what's inside of you. Now, that is when the little small voice begins to tell you this guy is either, either a liar, a cheat, he's not faithful, he's not honest, he won't treat mm -hmm. you well, he's a narcissist, he's love bombing you, you know, and... You don't need to suppress it. So then you go for what you think you can guard your life with. Before we got married, my marriage counselor asked my husband, can you die for Sandra? And my husband said, yes. He said, Sandra, go. You, you, he's, in, he was a, he's a Nigerian. He said, Sandra, go, go. You found yourself a good man. Go. <laughs> he said, if he had said no, or if he had hesitated for just a minute, I would have said, this guy is no good for you. Right. Because a man is a protector, a man is a provider, a man is a defender, a man is a leader, a man watches over his home. So That's if right. he can't take that authority and say, I'm going to defend you okay. in the midst of all the odds, then that person is okay. not for you. And that okay. is the kind of thing that women we should watch out for. Listen, the dating world is now, I call it the muddy waters of dating. It is okay. very muddy now because they're bringing in so many things that right. since time began we didn't think these things would even come yeah. and those of you on my platform you realize that i keep putting little little nuggets here and there so that you get to know what is happening in the dating world it's getting very muddy it's me some <laughs> that, that would be for another day that would be for another day. <laughs> well viewers i told you and here we are the remote yet Finish this session, but a new nugget has just dropped in. <laughs> the the muddy waters of dating. It is very muddy. <laughs> it is muddy. I think that will be our next topic. Whether we like it. <laughs> <laughs> that is really going to be our next session with Sandra. Absolutely. Because, because yeah, look, sitting behind and looking at what is happening with relationship. Yeah, as an expert, she's seen it all. And as um, a new beginner. <laughs> for my intermediate brethren and for my advanced people. 
<laughs> you can bear witness with what Sandra is telling oh, us. Yeah. Sandra is telling us. Yeah, so for those of us who have been into relationships and out, hey, from all that she said, I'm sure you've taken something out of it. Don't suffocate in a relationship that you know is, is not taking you anywhere. For Stop the ones that. you know they are taking you somewhere, work on the rough edges. The yeah. diamond you saw that attracted you to that person, work on those edges. Absolutely. Work on those edges because, hey, at the end of the day, it's going to be between you and the person. The pressures are going to come. The friends are going to leave. Family are going to leave you together. You're mm -hmm. going to cleave together as well. Absolutely. And that is going to be between you and your partner. Mm -hmm. Benjamin wouldn't be there. Sandra wouldn't be there. It will be you and the person face Absolutely. to face. If you can't contain the person now, how sure are you? You can contain them when you get married. Awesome. This has been something else. <laughs> <laughs> this has been something else. No, I, I, I've been so bad. <laughs> by the things you've shared with us, because these are things people are going through and they Absolutely. needed a season word like this to bring peace to them. And I'm sure the viewers have taken all that needs to be taken, yeah? And the catch word here is that if it's not trouble, <laughs> if it's not trouble, don't hold on to it for a longer time. Hey, you might be holding on and the right people will be passing by and be watching. Tell me about it. <laughs> 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 Definitely. See, see Sarah share her own experience, and I love it when when you share your own experience because this is you. Yeah. When she started, the husband was in school. She was mm -hmm. earning well, but she saw something deeper than the schooling. So the question is, what are you seeing in the person you are dating? Is this something you die for, or is this something it will kill you? Mm. So Sandra, what is next that you're doing? Are you have any projects you're working on? Or are you doing any? Or, or is, that, yes, is there a well, point that you organize that we should come? <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yes. There's, there's quite a few um, events coming up. Getting to the end of the year is always um, very busy for those of us into events because that is where our cocoa season is, where <laughs> we get to organize events for um, yeah. corporate events and, and personal uh, private events as well. Um, right. We just finished the Real Mom Summit, which was yeah. amazing. It was called the Empowered Mom. So it was wow. it was super amazing. We've got um, a few coming up. Um, I think next month, which starts even tomorrow, we have the um, Beyond the Vows coming up. Okay. where we talk about beyond the vows you've said i okay. do i do last year we did before you say i do and so this <laughs> year we're saying be, <laughs> beyond the vows wow. how do you pivot your relationship beyond the vows post covid how are you okay. handling your relationship how is your marriage going how is your okay. um dating or in a long-term commitment committed relationship how is it going so we've got a few um things coming up here and there and we will keep you all informed so you come in and just listen to the nuggets that will be dropped. Wow, wow. So before I say I do, or before you say I do, and then now beyond the vows, now you've, you've said that I do. Now you are in the doing. So, now so what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> we want to bet what you are doing. <laughs> right, right, right. So, what are your last words you want to share with us on okay. this uh, It's been it's been lovely. It's been lovely um being on this program. Thank you all so much for having me and letting me come on your screens with my I love I love smiling. I love laughing. So I tend to do that a lot. And thank you for sh me showing you all my teeth and all that. But hey, it's been amazing. Listen, I always say relationships are not difficult. It's the people in it that makes relationship difficult. If yeah. you realize that this person you're dating is not going to take you anywhere, 
don't waste your time. Don't give yourself heartache. Don't give yourself sleepless nights over somebody that is not even thinking about you. Right. Okay. Your happiness is very important. Know who you are as a single person. Develop yourself. Know your purpose. Know your worth. Know your end zone. Where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve before you even get into a relationship? And if the person you're dating is not on the same wavelength as you, don't choke. Don't suffocate. Drop them and go find your way. Because if they're not going the same way with you, what's the point? Don't let anybody pressure you into going into a relationship that is not going to help you. Don't let no pastor tell you this is the person you're supposed to marry. Right. It is not the pastor's duty to match make you. Right. If the pastor brings you guys together and you still realize he is not the one I want to marry, say, Pastor, this one I can't do. <laughs> tell them because it's not the pastor who is going to be enduring the boxing when it starts. Right. He will tell you, go and pray about it. It will be you that will be enduring. So don't let no pastor tell you this is the one. Know for yourself. Listen to your intuition if you're a woman. Whether you're a man or a woman listening to me, listen, watch out for the red flags. There are a lot of women with baggages. There are a lot of guys who are toxic. Don't bring That's them right. into your healthy environment. Any That's toxic right. person, disperse them off. Get to know their traits. Get to know what is your breaking point. Get to know. Set your boundaries and work within them. Boundaries are not for them. Boundaries are for you. So you always need to know what you can contain, the flaws you can work with, the imperfections you can work with. If you can't, no business in there. And make sure you can guard that ball with your life and take it to the end zone. It's beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> right, so Listen, Sandra, prayer I, is very important as well. Prayer is important. Pray about the person who says, I think I want to date you. Pray about it. And once you're praying about it, God might not speak to you audibly and say, This is the one, go with him. No. <laughs> but there will be signs, there will be things that you would get. You'll be you become you'll be very comfortable when you're around that person. You have peace within you. If that peace is not there. I'm sorry, but God is not saying anything. I say that the perfect matchmaker is God. All good and perfect gifts come from God. He gives you the perfect gift, but it depends on you how you work it. If you yes. don't work it well, over to you. If God can take yes. kingdoms from kings, what tells you he can't take a relationship from you yes. if you don't treat it well? Works. Right. Sandra just touched us down. Yes, we've touched down. <laughs> <laughs> She just did that. <laughs> well, was I in this session? <laughs> I was definitely in this session. And I was oh, I'm privileged. Thank you. Thank you for having me. In this session. It was awesome. Thank you. It was thank awesome. You. It was awesome. So viewers, thank you once again for joining us for this evening's morning, afternoon, depending on where you're watching from session on the power impacts series where today we had a wonderful person in our midst in the person of uh, Sandra Awodelari who handled perfectly dating with purpose with us so hey you know what to do you know what to do and you know what to do see you again on our next episode and as you know men is ambassador Benjamin Osuasa we'll meet here again and get ready for the next session, which is also going to touch us down. Thank you, and God bless us all.